Hi everyone. In the history of microbiology topic, we started out discussing about different scientists and their contributions in the field of microbiology. In this video, we are going to discuss about abiogenesis versus biogenesis. What is meant by abiogenesis? The origin of living or life from non-living organisms only is called as abiogenesis which is also called as spontaneous generation. Coming to the biogenesis, the origin of living organisms from living organisms only that means origin of life or living from living organisms only is going to be called as biogenesis which are quite opposite. So here there are certain theories which are supporting abiogenesis and there are certain theories which are supporting the biogenesis. So in this video we are going to discuss about few of them. Let's begin with the abiogenesis supporting theories. Aristotle proposed the theory of spontaneous generation which is also called as abiogenesis. It was a general opinion for more than 2000 years that the living organisms arose from decomposing organic matter spontaneously. That means example you can take the maggots which are going to be appeared on a piece of flesh when left open. Since it was observed that there was no involvement of any living organism for the rise of maggots or larvae, this process was called as abiogenesis. Along with Mr. Aristotle, one more scientist who supported the abiogenesis is John Needham. So he is Mr. John Needham. By 1745, an English scientist used microscopic observations to support the theory of abiogenesis. To test the theory, what he done is, he boiled meat broth for several minutes in a loosely sealed flask. Immediately after boiling, he saw the sample under the microscope and that the broth had no living things. Now he left the broth for several days. And after a few days, he examined the flask and found the microorganisms in the meat broth. And that's how he supported that the life has originated from this meat broth without the involvement of any life. Okay, so this is what the John Needham said. But there comes the concept of uh, disproving spontaneous generation theory. Francisco Reddy's experiment was a setback for the theory of spontaneous generation theory. Uh, but uh, John Needham in 1745 again disproved uh, this uh, Francisco Reddy experiment because he was unable to explain it clearly. And this was again uh, disproved, that means that the spontaneous generation theory was again disproved by another elegant scientist, Mr. Louis Pasteur, that we will discuss. Now, what was the Reddy's experiment? So, the Francisco Reddy in 1668 who was an Italian physician, did an experiment with flies and wide mouth jars containing meat. Okay, so here you can see the meat. So he has taken the open and uh, some sort of uh, wide mouth jars and some of them are closed. So that experiment we'll see. So here what he found is where do maggots come from? So this is the question that he had in his brain. So according to his hypothesis, maggots come from flies. So what he found is the maggots are not come generated from the meat. They are coming from the flies. He's, he's, uh, this is the hypothesis that was done by him. So what he done is he has put the meat into uh, three separate jars. So how many jars he has taken? Three separate jars he's taken. Now the jar one is left open. So here you can see one of the jar was left open containing the meat. So maggots developed and flies were observed laying eggs on the meat in the open jar. So he observed the thing that maggots developed and the flies are going to be there of laying the eggs. Next, the jar 2. The jar 2 is covered with a netting. So here you can see this is a netting where it's a transparent one that meat can be visible to the outside. Now, maggots appeared on the net. 
flies were absorbed laying the eggs on the netting. That means they are thinking that the, they are laying the eggs on the meat and they are laying the eggs on the net itself. Okay. And coming to the third jar, which is a sealed one, which is not transparent. So obviously what happens, no flies are going to be attracted and they are not going to lie any eggs on it. So that's how he uh, found that if a flask was closed with a lid, so adult flies could not get in. No maggots develop on the rotten meat within. But in a flask without a lid, maggots soon were seen in the meat because adult flies had laid eggs and more adult flies soon appeared. So this is the thing that was uh, done by Mr. Reddy's and this was an experiment that was done by him and what he found is no growth in the seal jar was a step towards disproving the theory of spontaneous generation theory. But this was uh, totally um, proven wrong by Mr. John Needham in the experiment of this one by taking the boil infusion theory. So the, this person was uh, not fully what we call it as a, not able to fully explain of uh, disproving the spontaneous generation theory. But later on, Mr. Louis Pasher, his work disproved the spontaneous generation theory or abiogenesis. In order to disprove the spontaneous generation theory, Pasher invented the swan neck flask or goose neck flask. So the name of the flask that he invented to disprove the spontaneous generation theory or abiogenesis is nothing but the goose neck flask or swan neck flask. So with this flask, what he done is he taken the infusion that means meat broth, okay, or the media which contains uh, some sort of uh, bacteria or anything and he boil it. So what happens obviously all the microorganisms or any the, uh, the particles are going to be killed in it and he left the thing like that. He observed no growth. Though that air is going to be allowed to pass in and pass out which was said by uh, wrong by Mr. Uh, Spalange. So Spalange is the one who said that this theory was wrong because no air was getting so maybe the mi microorganism that's why it was not developed so that also he has disproven it by using this one allowing the air passage through the narrow swan neck flask or goose neck flask now what happened no growth is absorbed now what he done is he just tilted so what he done he has just tilted such that the broth comes inside touching this dust particle settled at the neck now he observed the microbial growth. So that's how this Louis Pasteur said that the air is the one which is carrying all the dust and the contaminants which are getting settled at the neck, bend of the neck. Now again he heated broth in these three types of plants remain micro free. If a broth was tipped into the neck that I told you and flown back microbes appear again. So this was one of the last and most important experiments disproving the theory of spontaneous generation theory. So this is all about the disproving of uh, spontaneous generation theory. So this was first led by Mr. Reddy, but he was unable to fully explain the disproving the spontaneous generation theory by his experiment. But finally, the last uh, Thing that was the most important one in disproving the spontaneous generation theory was by Mr. Louis Pasteur. So this is all about the abiogenesis and the biogenesis theory for supporting both the theories. Okay, so that's all uh, about the abiogenesis and biogenesis theory in the topic history of microbiology. Thank you.